What kind of roommate would I be if I didn't offer you good dating advice? In fact, I'm such a good roommate that I'll give you good dating advice while whispering so I don't wake up Mr. Biscuit's the tiny kitten right there. So sit down, shut up, and listen close. A lot of these dating gurus out on the TikToks and on the YouTubes are filled with bad advice. A lot of them are spitting out this whole Alpha Sigma nonsense, which is actually astrology for dudes. Real wolves don't do that sort of thing. So if you're rolling up into a date, your chest all puffed out like, yeah, I'm a total alpha and this woman's going to get with me no matter what, you're going to have a bad time. I'm going to tell you right now, the number one thing that is on most women's minds when they go on a date is, is this person going to drag me into an alleyway? Will I take a sip from my cherry Pepsi Max and then wake up at the bottom of a pit with lotion in a basket being thrown at me with threats of hoses being used on me? I am being so serious right now. It is important for your date to know that you are not a serial killer. Not how much money you got, not how much you can bench press, but how safe you are to be around. Also, the last thing you want to do is tell your date, hey, I'm not a serial killer, because the first thing on her mind is going to be, that person's a serial killer. Okay, I see you're shaking your head. You totally get what I'm saying. That's fantastic. Moving on. Now you may be thinking, Felicia, how do I even get to the step of going to a date to prove that I'm not a creep? Number one, don't go on dates to prove you're not a creep. Just don't be a creep. And number two, you gotta have friends. Having friends helps widen your social group here. And having a wider social group means there's more people you can meet. More people you can meet equals more potential dates. Also, friends can help you set up dates with their friends. You can meet random people on the Tinder or on the Grinder or whatever it is you use. But I always found that I had longer term relationships with friends of friends or friends that I met through things like Dungeons and Dragons or other social events rather than somebody from a dating website. Also, having friends helps you fill up your social bar, so that way you're not putting all that pressure onto your potential date. It's just healthier in the long run. And you may be saying to yourself, Oh, Felicia, what about friends that I want to date? All right, make sure you're sitting down. The friend zone doesn't exist. I know that hurts to hear. I really do, but the friend zone really doesn't exist. If you do things that are things that friends do for each other, like help people while they're crying or go out and do stuff with them or whatever, then that's just being a friend. That's not putting emotional money into an emotional loan that the other person has to pay back. If you are somebody's friend, they owe you nothing unless they literally say, hey, can I get five bucks? I'll pay you back. Then they owe you five bucks. Otherwise, they owe you nothing. For instance, I am somebody who prefers to have dudes as friends because I'm a tomboy and I grew up with brothers. Not every woman is a potential mate. And this goes for all of the other genders too. Friends are so important and I wish more people would understand that. If you've been friends with somebody for years, just kind of lying and waiting like an eel hiding in a cave for that person to eventually go, oh my god, I'm so in love with you, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna be all bitter like, wow, I spent all night with this person listening to them cry about their ex and they still don't want to date me. What the hell? Instead, you could be really proud of yourself for being a really great friend and, hear me out, 
that person you were there for is going to be more likely to recommend you to their friends. They're going to talk you up. They're going to be your wing person. And that's great. Okay, so you got friends. Amazing. That is really good. And you got a date. That is also really good. You're going to go to a public place. You're not going to invite them over to your house where you may have a dungeon that they'll be locked in forever. You're going to go somewhere like Starbucks or McDonald's or Panera Bread, apparently. I personally like Bass Pro Shop or the fishing section over at Walmart. Also, they have places now where you can order your food on your phone and pay for it up front so that way it gets rid of the awkwardness of deciding who pays for the date. You don't want to go somewhere too fancy where you're going to be sitting there forever and you don't want to go to a movie where you can't talk to them because what if they're a serial killer? Talking is worth its weight in gold. It helps you assess whether or not you like this other person. Like, sure, they may look like Lady Domatrice, but if they do nothing but talk about themselves and their ex, you're gonna have a bad time. Additionally, don't sit there and talk about yourself constantly and definitely don't bring up your ex constantly. This has happened to me. It is a huge turnoff. Instead, ask about them. Be genuinely curious about them. And if they never ask any questions about you, that's a red flag. Speaking of red flags, if they're an asshole to service workers, that is worse than a red flag. That is like a nuclear emergency flag. And if you're bad to service workers, then that means that your mama and daddy paid for everything and you never worked a day in your life. Also, don't sit there and look at your phone the whole time. If you're looking at the TikTok or you're texting somebody else, that's extremely disrespectful. And if the other person is doing that, well, now you know that they're really disrespectful and you don't have to go on a second date with them. Now, before I discuss making a move or anything like that, let's double check your grooming here. Have you taken a shower? Did you put on deodorant? No, not Axe body spray. No, not perfume. Genuine deodorant. Smells that are too heavy can be almost as gross as armpit stink. Yes, I know. I smell like catfish because I am a catfish. Also, do your clothes smell? Did you leave that shirt in the washer for three days before you remembered to dry it? Sorry about doing that, by the way. I have a terrible memory. Does your breath stank? Did you brush your teeth? Did you floss? Yes, you got a floss. Yes, even catfish ladies like myself need to brush and floss our teeth. You don't have to dress all fancy. You don't have to have expensive clothes. It helps that your clothes don't have holes or stains on them, but if you're doing something involving paint or dirt or anything, then that's okay. It's okay to wear crappy clothes for that. It's probably expected. Otherwise, try to keep it clean. Do you have to have a beard? Do you have to be muscular? No. Do you have to have a big set of, um, um, assets? No. There is a person for every body type out there. I don't like beards, and I don't like muscles, but I like a good set of gills and really firm whiskers. A nice tail also helps, especially when we're trying to get away from the fishermen. And you may be asking yourself, well, when do I kiss this person? Whatever you do, do not hold the sides of their face and then go in like you're a bald eagle going for my mama. The best thing to do is ask, can I kiss you? Or if the person you're dating is an uptight English teacher, then say, may I kiss you? Same goes for hugs. Would it be all right if I gave you a hug? 
you're gonna save yourself a lot of awkwardness just communicating like that. Finally, at the end of the date, if your date decides that they don't like you, do not take it personally and do not attack them. I'm being serious. People really do that. They get their pride hurt and then they attack the person who rejected them. Don't be that way. Instead, move on. You and your criminal record will be grateful. And if you found at the end of the date that you didn't like the other person, just be honest. Don't be an asshole. If they ask you for another date, just politely say no thank you and bid the person adieu. All right, Rumi, I hope this was helpful. I also hope that my whispering didn't wake up your cat because last time your cat caught sight of me, it tried to eat me. Wait a second. Where is your cat? Oh, hell no. Bad kitty, back off, off, get off, ow, ow. Hey y'all, it's Marsha O'Hare with Nightmare Public Broadcasting here to ask, what are your best dating tips? Comment below. My own personal one is they gotta like dogs or they're gonna have a bad time. The people who deserve a good trip to Bash Pro Shops are Zemo, Rocco, The Luck of Samancer, AF Yakla, Yoko Thul, Ping Lee, Jerry was Script, Man of Many Bees, Matt Weston, Cirrus Daydream, Skeletor, and Zoo Wily Eye Fire, Lodico, Sam Myers, Jackson Daniel 42, Pempster Mogus, and Brian Adamson. Some channel news. I'm going to be moving back to the North Kakalaki this April. Yay! I get to go to the state fair this year. Yay! Do you know where it's always the state fair? Patreon.com slash Belladonna ASMR where you can get access to all sorts of goodies. Join now, join whatever, and you'll always get access for a whole month. Don't like commitment, but will you want to support the channel? Then donate via Super Thanks on YouTube. Can't do that? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and share. The more engagement, the more YouTube's nice to me, and the more content you get. Also, next stream's going to be on Monday, and I'm going to ask the community in a poll which time is going to work for y'all. Until then, y'all stay safe for me. Bye! Wait a second. What the heck is that smell? Napoleon, where did you find that fish, girl? Put it back where you found it! Oh, Napoleon. I can't stay mad at you. You're such a good kitty.